Hello, friends and adventurers, and welcome back to Sally Cat Plays Exile 2 Crystal Souls. I've done some pit stops for identification and random item shops. Okay. Nothing really worth keeping from the Grim Cavern. Steel Halberd was sort of nice, but I've got better now. But it turns out, the Boots of Speed aren't the only broken speed item in the game! There's a Ring of Speed, and I can't afford it! Wah! But at Shaney's Bazaar... I found, and could afford, an archer's bow. This might bump Trouble's archery up a notch or two. And now I'm broke again. So, time to head towards another chunk of Empire territory for some looting and uh, retrieving one or two important items for exile, of course. This bit of... Cave wall looks odd. Okay, I guess that's just because it is a uh, map boundary. Trees. This broad area is a ruin twice over. It was the location of one of Exile's first cities, but was abandoned in favor of better sites. Then, after the Slith Wars, Exiles tried to build a new city here. Alas, the Empire attacked, and raiders razed it to the ground. Now there is nothing but a broad swath of rubble, and the potential for great things, should peacetime ever return. I don't know why I feel like there's something hidden behind a wall here, maybe in one of the other games, and I found something hidden. Okay, then. There is a hut here. It was placed between two high piles of rubble. Its owner must have wanted his or her privacy. You didn't see it until you were right on top of it. On the door is the sunburst symbol of exile. The door is opened by a man in a thick leather jerkin. His sword is out, but after looking you over, he sheathes it. He's clearly a skilled fighter. The muscles ripple freely under the armor, and he moves with the grace of a dancer. His voice, however, is untrained and gruff. He says, simply, I'm Kevtar. Come in. He tells you he was a swordsman for exile for many years, but retired to come here long before the Empire came. He sometimes ambushes invaders and does training, but mainly tries to stay out of the way of the war. He eventually says, I fought for a long time. I forgot more about sword fighting than you'll ever know. But I want wealth like the next guy. Give me 2,500 gold, and I'll tell you all my secrets of sword fighting. What do you say? Well, I'd love to, but, uh, I do not have that much gold right now. Kevtar shrugs. Your loss, he says. You depart. Haha, -ha, but of course I can come back here. <laughs> not enough gold. I have to remember that for later. Okay. Not much of interest over there right now. But, welcome to Fort Remote, which has, well, I could say it's seen better days. This is the original wall. There is a plaque here. It reads, in memory of the bold defenders of the last Fort Remote, who died fighting evil. They will always be remembered. Well, I'm not sure they, re they really got much chance to fight evil. They died minding their own business when evil suddenly blew everything up. But yes, there is indeed a shiny new Fort Remote here. A large iron plaque. Fort Remote, version 2.0. You meet a lithe woman in chainmail. She has a rapier and bow at the ready. She nods in greeting. I'm Kim. She shrugs. Eh, all the standard boring soldier stuff. You are answered by confused silence. Yeah, kind of a neat touch that they kept this ruined wall as part of the memorial. Wasn't actually done there yet. I 
doubt there's... Oh, there's a spider here. Spider is not attacking me. Spider is a hostile Arania lord. Yeah, huh. Okay, I guess I didn't need to put all the debuffs on it. Man, that would have been much cooler if it was a friendly spider I could talk to. You I can talk to. There is a young, pretty woman sitting below the tree. She has a nasty, curved knife at her belt. She doesn't get up. I'm Angarahad. Sit and relax. I'm taking my break before returning to my toil. I'm the quartermaster. I get the supplies from Darman. Keep the weapons sharp. That sort of thing. Uh, I guess supplies and Darman. Aha. When they arrive, the Rakshasi keep killing off the merchants. Oh, that's not good. Magical cat people. A bunch of them came from the surface with the Empire. Attracted to easy prey and easy loot. There's a fortress full of them to the east. Fortunately, they don't come here, so you're safe from them now. Just be careful when you head east. Noted. Rakshasas are not something to take lightly. Magic immune jerks. Lots of runes, probably good for defense against Empire Invaders. And a whole bunch of soldiers here, who this time around are not napping. Also, there's a Nephil in the corner. What a rare sight! It's a Nephilim, wearing an immaculately clean apron. He bows to you. I am Maur. I am honored to do the cooking at this fort. He makes a soft purring noise. This is where I ended up. I wanted to leave my people, to do travel, you see. I wanted to see this land. I traveled this great cave everywhere. But with the battles, I needed a place to stop. I ended up here, where I earned employing. He gives you a proud, toothy grin. I cook. It is strange, working for human tastes. I do do okay, though sometimes people are joking. They say I like wanting to put rats in the stew, but I would not do that. The rats here are not good enough. You can't tell whether he's joking or not. And you decide not to think about it. I mean, I'm sure my Neville party members could tell if he's joking, but... Meh. There is an aging wizard here, reading rituals from a dog-eared spellbook. When you approach, he closes the book and looks up at you. I am Freitas. I am preparing spells of defense. Nothing complicated. Mass hastes, strength spells, and such. Things for when the Empire attacks. This fort is well defended enough to withstand their assaults, especially because of the runes. The central hall is filled with runes enchanted with powerful defensive magic. I helped create them. When we wish, anyone touching them is blasted to dust. Our walls are magically hardened as well. This fort can fall, but it will take a mighty blow to defeat it. Probably too mighty. Okay. 
Well, I do remember Freitas was someone we were supposed to talk to about Thompson. Freitas looks startled. He looks around, then bends close to you. Yes, he came here. He's in hiding below. He is convinced the Empire wishes to destroy him. He came here one night, and the next morning he disappeared. Before he was gone, though, he told me the secret of his hiding place, should an exile need to find him. He said that to find him, you must look behind the painting in the Eastern Guest Room. You take note of this. Alright then. Kitchen! And storage! And you look interesting. You meet a middle-aged woman with very long, very curly scarlet hair. She is sitting at her desk, poring over maps. Oddly, she is dressed in a simple dress, with the symbol of a commander embroidered on the shoulders. She looks up and smiles guardedly. Her eyes, piercing and analytical, sweep over you. She says, I am Commander Lori, daughter of Rourke. Welcome. I command this fort, as my father did before me. I organize our defenses, and prepare for the Empire attack. My father was slain when a horde of demons destroyed the old fort remote. You can still find the old fort's ruins, just to the east. When he died, I joined the army, and rose up to this position in order to take his place. She looks down at her unusual garb, and smiles. As you can see, I've made my way in my own style. Indeed, most soldiers don't wear dresses. I don't like uniforms, and I don't like uniform thinking. The Empire's forces in this area are unusual, and we, this fort, needs to be unusual to deal with them. There are two large Empire outposts to the west, Kothtar and Akranath. They are very unusual places. Kothtar is a site of magic and magical experimentation. Strange creatures come from there, including huge, amazingly strong mutant giants. Not the sort of thing an ordinary soldier has to deal with. I guess she's not going to tell me much about Akronath. No, I'm spelling it right. Okay, what of the Empire? They haven't attacked in a while, which is strange, since while the Empire doesn't have many troops to the west, if they broke past us, they could run wild through the Great Cave. So I'm preparing our defenses, and looking for opportunities to attack. That reminds me, I'm always looking for adventurers to go on missions. Oh, you know. The Empire can get small groups past us. We don't know how. We, in turn, want to send spies west. To do this, I need to see a blue pass, so I can make forgeries. Bring one to me, and I'll try to earn you a promotion. Well, we've already got the promotion, and the blue pass. Aha. You show your blue pass to the commander. She takes it away for an hour, then returns it to you. Thank you very much. I will send word to the castle of what you've done for us. Hopefully, they'll reward you with higher clearance. Already done. Okay, I think I've gotten all that I can from you, which was kind of a lot for an NPC. Must. Search. Bookshelves. One of the fol- One of the folders on these shelves catches your eye. It describes the fortress Akronath, which is to the west and then to the north. You find its location, and that it is a place filled with evil magic. But apparently little else is known about it. Among the books on the shelf, you find a map and notes on the fortress Kothtar. It is at the southwest corner of the tunnels to the west. The maps note there are several Empire guard posts between here and there. And nothing in the desk. Okay. 
guest quarters. Yep. Entire south end is guest quarters. Storeroom, which is locked. The first thing you notice is the long steel blade, shining and sharp enough to cut granite. The next thing you notice is the man sharpening it, short, muscular, and with a wickedly pointed black beard. He gives you a momentary glance. He continues running the sharpening stone along the edge of the beautiful blade. I'm Blade Master Deltarian. Sharpening my sword. And a very nice sword it is, I'm sure. That was what Master Kevtar told me to do. Always keep my blade sharp. The finest bladesman I've ever had the pleasure to know. A sad story, really. He finally tired of the bloodshed and retired. He lives in solitude now, hidden away in the ruin to the north. I will go visit him soon. He taught me well, and I owe him that much. So that would be our clue to go look for Kevtar if we hadn't already found him by accident. In fact, I think that's the only thing this guy can talk about. Also, this sign won't stop me because I know the unlock spell. Him. There we go. So yeah, it's a storeroom full of generic army fort supplies. Which I'm basically uninterested in. It is customary for exile forts to have a small shrine. This one, as usual, shows signs of frequent visitation. A bowl of fresh mushrooms has been placed in front of it as an offering. However, its onk is only crudely carved granite. It's a shame. Hmm. So, generic guest bedroom. Generic bedroom that is unlocked and has a non-generic person in it. You meet a holy woman. She paces about, praying silently to herself. She seems agitated. I am Mother Madge. I am preparing myself. People here need my protection. There are strong warriors here, and powerful mages. However, I am the only one who can heal. Let me know if that is something you need. So, yes, could get healing here if I needed it. Ah, I am storing my energies to cast spells should we be attacked. We don't know what manner of bizarre creature will come from the west next. Demons? Undead? Mutant giants? We don't know, and we prepare the best we can. And this dusty bedroom has an interesting painting on the wall. You look behind the painting, and indeed, you find a button. You press the button, and the wall to the south slides out of the way. There's a hidden stairway here, leading down below the fort. Abusive trickery? I'm not sure I like the sound of that. The door is locked, and the keyhole is surrounded by runes. You try your keys, and find that the key you found in the ruins west of Formolo unlocks the door. Neat. And we have a hall of onyx pillars. A hall of very annoying teleportation. Um, this might take a little while to figure out.
What? No, but how? Every direction does the same thing. What? Oh, I can walk this way, I guess. For a while. Oh, goody, I've gotten to the other corner of the room, and uh, still no real progress. Hang on a moment, I need to go look up a guide. One search of the official hint book later. Something went click. Okay, that was annoying. That would have taken forever to figure out without a guide. Oh hey, plants. Floral gates. You feel very confused. Ah! Uh... Morwen can't restore mind, that's bad. Scorn still can. That is some weird RNG on who gets dumbfounded how badly. You feel very woozy. Uh, no, I'm... well. I would be diseased. I still don't have Revive All. Where can I get Revive All? Ugh. You feel very weak. Ow. I really want revival. Why can't I have it? All right. Scorn make with a curing. And of course, after getting all the debuffs, monsters appear all around you! <coughs> and they're all null bugs. And guards. Why do you hate me? No, 
Okay, archery not that much better so far. Golem came up to visit us too. Wonderful. <coughs> flaming weapon. Oh, that wasn't the flaming, that was the assassination. Man, that's really good damage with assassination. Hmm. Also, the hasting for Major Blessing isn't quite as good as Major Haste. Just wondering if I wanted to try any summoning, and remember that I can summon my own quick guests. To, okay, no more enemies. And for some reason, the relevant squares on the map still damage me, or disease me. But now there's another hallway opened up. Perhaps, maybe. Okay, the rune went click. Oh! You are not attacking me. That's a relief. Bleh. Thompson's Lair. Thompson, I hope you are worth it. You finally reach Thompson. He is a small, harried-looking man, who seems profoundly relieved you're not about to kill him. I don't know, I'm a little annoyed right now. I am Thompson. Welcome to my hideaway. He bows his head, hiding here, cowering like a vole. Or some other sort of small, grubby creature. Thompson shakes his head. I can't tell you more about that. I'm not paranoid. Coming here, I was one step ahead of my potential assassins. But I'm safe here, and I can tell you what I've discovered. He sits. You see, I was doing research for the Tower of Magi. I was trying to discover coordinates for their portal. A wondrous creation. It can send you anywhere, if you only know the right thing to chant when you step into it. I was trying to discover the chants. I developed a special technique. I can travel with my mind, all over exile. And I figured out a way to match coordinates with the places where I end up. But that's technical and not very important. What is important is that one day, when traveling through the ether, I became lost. I traveled too far away to be safe. I wandered for hours looking for a landmark. And eventually, I ended up outside a huge fortress, black and surrounded by lava and chasms. And when I was there, the master of the fort detected me. It was Garzad! It was his fortress! He detected me, and I fled before he could disrupt me. 
I finally found my way home, after many more hours. But it was too late. I had the forbidden knowledge. I detected the coordinates to reach Garzad's fortress. And he knew it! That's why he will stop at nothing to kill me, and anyone who finds him out. And that is why I must tell you that they... He takes a deep breath. The coordinates are Vag Ob Tor. He sighs. What a relief. I'm still probably a dead man. At least now the secret won't die with me. Okay, then. Well, we are one step closer to the third major goal of this game. Finding and killing Garzad. Are we prepared to do it now? Heck no! We've got other forts to loot first. Until then, have a good one, everybody.